Hey guys, it's John here. I have another unboxing and review of a rare vintage Sea Monkey product for you today. This time, we'll be taking a look at one of TransScience's most unusual items, the Sea Monkey's Aquamaze. It's an odd combination of both the keychain aquarium that can temporarily house your aquatic pets and also an electronic maze game. So, yeah, super weird. But I guess that's what Sea Monkeys are best known for, so it's certainly on brand for the company. The Aquamaze was released under Exploratory in the year 2000, which was also around the same time that many other wacky Sea Monkey products were hitting the market, such as the Penquarium and the notorious Sea Monkeys Aquarium wristwatch. As I mentioned, these aren't particularly easy to come by these days, both because it's 23 years old, but also because I doubt they were too popular during the time of their release. In fact, after a year of trawling the internet, I never saw a single one of these come up for sale, until recently some old stock was found, and a whole bunch of them suddenly flooded the market for a very reasonable price. I managed to pick this one up for just $16, though I saw boxes of 10 being sold for only $120, which is an amazing deal if you're in desperate need of 10 Sea Monkey keychain aquariums. This catalogue page from February in 2000 shows some of Exploratory's newest products at the time, including the debut of the Aquamaze. The picture shows a pink prototype, and the description mentions that it was meant to come in three different coloured housing variations. Though as far as I'm aware, these different colours never made it to market. Instead, they just decided to go with the single clear design. The packaging is pretty straightforward. Up top we have the words, Amazing Live Sea Monkeys Aquamaze, two toys in one, mini aquarium and electronic game. Coming down a little, we can see the package contents, but I'll go over all of that when I open it up. Flipping over to the back, we have a little more information about the product and some instructions on how to use it. I really like the personalised illustrations here. I've always been more of a visual learner, so I appreciate seeing these when they're included. Further down there's a cutout with instructions for ordering the Yellow Sea Monkey Handbook. This thing was like the Sea Monkey Bible back in the day, but unfortunately it's not available anymore. I was lucky to have one included in my Sea Monkey's Ocean of Fun kit though, so I'll leave a link to a PDF copy of it in the description of this video for anybody who wants to read through it. In the bottom corner it says that batteries are needed for the maze game to work, but apparently they're already included. I just hope they're still working after all these years. While doing some research into this product, I discovered that this Aquamaze was actually the very first keychain aquarium that was ever made for sea monkeys. Though a year later in 2001, TransScience would come out with a similar keychain habitat which was included in the Pirate Gold kit. This was then followed by the Sea Bubble Aquarium in 2007, which came in standalone packaging and also part of an ocean zoo set. Let's open up the blister card packaging and take a closer look at everything inside. First up we have some paperwork. It has some instructions on one side for how to hatch and raise a sea monkey colony, and on the other side is instructions for installing fresh batteries into the Aquamaze. As always this kit comes with packets number 1, 2 and 3, which are the sachets necessary to begin a sea monkey colony. The condition feels okay considering they're 23 years old, but I think there's a bit of moisture in packet number 1. I'll put them into a sea monkey tank at the end of this video to see if we can have any luck with hatching them. It also comes with one of the older style yellow feeding spoons with a different sized scoop at one end and a yellow aqualiche pipette. This tool is included to help you transfer your sea monkeys from their main tank into the keychain aquarium, which we'll test out in a moment. And here's the Aquamaze itself. It's kind of egg shaped and split into two halves, with a small chain and key ring coming off one end. This side is just an empty dome, which is the housing to keep your sea monkeys in. There's a small stopper here which gives you access to the sealed compartment. Luckily the rubber still seems to be in decent condition. The other half here is the electronic maze game. I had to change the batteries in here because the old ones were dead. Thankfully I managed to get it working. For those of you familiar with the game operation, it functions in a similar way. There's a small metal handheld stylus that you're supposed to navigate through the maze without touching the sides. If you do accidentally bump into an edge though, this red light will flash on and one of a handful of different sounds will alert. I don't know about you guys, but this old soundboard gives me major nostalgia. They're the exact same sounds that used to come from my old dollar store toys that I'd play with as a kid. I think they're supposed to sound like futuristic weapons or something, but they work fine for this purpose too. I'm sure those of you who also grew up in the 90s can relate. I tried to complete the maze without touching the edges, but it was quite difficult. This thing is really small, and my fine motor control isn't that great. 
I found that if you move through it quickly though, it often won't register that you've bumped into an edge, so it's best to do it slowly for a true test. Alright, it's time to test out the mini aquarium section next. I have a sea monkey colony here that I started a few months back for my RoboDiver review video, so they'll be the participants for today's transfer. The process is quite straightforward. I just need to remove the small rubber stopper which gives us access to the aquarium section, and then it's as simple as picking up the sea monkeys with the aqua leash and popping them in. I'm always a little worried that I'm going to accidentally drop some of the sea monkeys onto my desk here when I'm moving them around, so I'm doing this part really carefully. The packaging says you're only supposed to put one or two sea monkeys into the aqua maze, but in my experience with the aquarium watch, it's fine to put more than that in for a short time. Keep in mind that this is not a permanent home for your sea monkeys. It's only supposed to be temporary for a bit of fun. The instructions say you're not supposed to have them in here for more than 12 hours, but even that seems a little excessive to me. So I'm only putting mine in here for a few minutes to capture some footage for the purposes of this video. Once that's done, you either carry on playing the electronic maze game, or put the stylus into this handy little holder, close it up, and take the keychain with you wherever you like. One quirky little feature is that there's a mini magnifying glass on top here, which is supposed to help you see the sea monkeys more clearly. Though in my experience, these things usually just do the opposite. They distort your view and kind of just get in the way, so I'm not crazy about them. So now for my overall thoughts on the Aquamaze. Usually, I'm quite positive about most sea monkey products, but the Aquamaze is a pretty weird concept, and the electronic maze game isn't great. It'll give you a solid 5 minutes of entertainment at best before you're done with it. I do like the keychain aspect though, but I think the dedicated keychains that came with the Pirate Gold sets were a better execution of this idea. I'm not particularly surprised that these weren't sold for too long either, and it makes sense why a bunch of old stock suddenly hit the market a few months back, because I doubt these things were exactly flying off the shelves back in 2000. That being said, part of what I love about Sea Monkeys is their courage to delve into the wacky and come out with absurd products that you'd never think of or see anywhere else. Sometimes they're a hit, and at other times, as with this product, it's a bit of a miss. I mentioned earlier that I'm going to try and hatch the 23 year old eggs that came from this set. I've tried to hatch old eggs in the past without any luck, but I recently read that the older the brine trump eggs are, the longer they take to hatch, so I'm going to give these ones a few weeks to see what happens. I'll leave them on my windowsill and check back in with you guys in a week or two for an update. Hey guys, so it's been two weeks under ideal conditions and there hasn't been any movement in here yet. I'll keep this tank going for another week or two and update you guys down in the comments if anything does end up hatching. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.